Hey, this is David with Arabesque Music. I have 15 tips today that are gonna help you edit your Guitar Pro 8 scores like a pro and make them look awesome. The first tip is to add an audio track. This is gonna make your score so much more enjoyable. You can do this with older projects too. Here's a project I was working on. It sounds okay, but we're gonna add an audio track by clicking on this button Select the audio track you want to add to your project. This could be the full track, a backing track, just drums, whatever it is, add that to your score. You can make your adjustments to make sure that it syncs up with your project. This is really gonna make your score sound so much better. The next tip is to work on the design of your project. This, you can use the design mode. Just click on this button you can make adjustments directly on the screen. You can adjust the length of each measure. You can adjust the number of measures that appear in each system. But the magic really happens in the style sheet. It's in the style sheet that you'll be able to adjust everything you see on the screen. The size of the staffs, the systems, the score header, the chord diagrams, the scale diagrams. You can also adjust the size of the text the font you're using. And you can also do this for the guitar specific notations. So that means you can adjust the font that you're gonna use for the symbol used for things like muting, slap, pop, pick scrape, and more. My next tip is to set your custom style sheet. By default, Guitar Pro 8 comes with three style sheets. Very usable, but not personal. We have a rock style sheet, a classical style sheet, and a jazz style sheet. These style sheets are very usable, but not custom to you. So you could take any of those three style sheets as a starting point, modify it, and then save it so that you can recall it later on. This is gonna add consistency to your projects. Once you're happy with your changes, save the style sheet and apply it to your score. You can do this in the options, apply style. Next tip is something that a lot of people forget, but it's gonna be very useful. And the tip is to complete the song information. See, there's a lot of useful information you can add to your projects. You can do this in the inspector panel found on the right side. Click on information. Don't forget to click on the more button to display all the possible entries. And this is where you can change the title, the artist, the album, the copyright. And you can also set some default information. Say you're working on a book and you don't wanna add the author each time. You can do this in the preferences, my information. My next tip is to define a fixed number of bar and length for each system. By enabling this feature, all of your systems are gonna be very consistent. It's gonna add clarity to your score and make it way easier to read. You can do this by right-clicking on the score directly, select bar, system layout. It looks way better. All right, the next tip is to use brackets. Brackets are typically used in the classical world where you have a lot of different instruments playing all at once. You're going to group these different instruments with brackets. Now, we are not limited to classical scores. We can use brackets in pretty much anything. For example, we can use brackets to join two staffs of the same instrument playing at once. Maybe we have a tablature staff and a standard notation staff. Let's use brackets to add clarity to that score. Now, this could be done in the style sheets. We're going to navigate to the systems and staffs tab brackets. My next tip is to display chord and scale diagrams directly in your score. Navigate to where you want to enter the chord, Press A on your keyboard, and this will open up the chord window. On the display option, you can choose to display that chord as it's happening within the score just above the tablature, or and you can also decide to list all the different chord diagrams that are present in your project on the top of your score, just under the title. Now the finger end can be modified. Simply right-click on it and make your modifications. You can find different chord options in the style sheet. Open the style sheet, navigate to the page and format tab, chord diagrams. The same goes with the scale diagrams. There's a lot of built-in options. 
And of course, you can make your own scale diagrams if you'd like to. This is very useful if you are a teacher and you want to educate how to play a certain chord or a certain scale. My next tip has to do with visual clutter on your screen. If you are dealing with multiple empty bars, you should group them together. For this, you could use the group sign. This will make your project way easier to read. Speaking of readability, my next tip has to do with using repeat signs. The repeat symbols are also found in the editing panel. Once you assign these repeat tools to whatever section you want to repeat, you can enter the number of times this section is going to be repeated. This is going to save a lot of space in your score, make it way easier to read. All right, my next tip is to add the fingering. This can be done for the left hand and for the right hand. Now, there's several options available to you. You'll find these options in the style sheet, notation tab, and fingerings. You can choose to place your fingerings before, above, or below the staff in the tablature for both hands. Two options for the left hand. T1234, which is the US notation, that stands for thumb, 1234. Or you could use the French notation, which is P for pouce, P1234. The right hand has four different options PIMAC, which is the most popular one. We also have PIMAX, PIMAE, or TIMAO. Now, here's a new thing with Guitar Pro 8 you can now add piano fingering. And not only can you add the piano notation, but you can also indicate if a sustain pedal is used or not. All right, my next tip is to add text to your score. Now, there's several options here. You can add free text to indicate whatever you want, wherever you want. Just navigate to the place you want to add that free text, press T on your keyboard, and start typing away. Now, your text is not limited to just one line. You can add paragraphs. If you want to go to the next line, simply press Control and Enter. You can also add lyrics, and there's a special tool for that that is found in the editing panel. Just click on the Lyrics tool right here and start adding your lyrics. Now, here's a tip. If you are maybe writing a score that has multiple singers, you can indicate the singer that is singing that particular part by using Brackets. Brackets are very useful if you want to indicate something special when you're reading those lyrics. Now you can also indicate the sections of your song. You can do this in the section menu, edit, and you can enter these sections however you want. Some people like to use letters, some people like to use words like verse, chorus, bridge. Completely up to you, but adding text to your score is really going to help the readers know how to execute that score. The next tip is very simple, but oftentimes overviewed. Adjust the global proportions of your score. This can be done in the style sheet, page and format tab, sizes, global score proportions. This is particularly useful if you are printing out your score and giving it to other musicians. Just adjust those settings. It's really going to make a difference. Next tip is to spend a little bit of time adjusting the sound of each note. You can do this in the menu, go to note, audio note settings, and there you can adjust the duration of each note, the offset, and the relative velocity. This is going to add a lot of realism to your project when you're playing it directly within the software. Now, speaking of sound, my next tip has to do with the drum set. Spend a little bit of time adjusting that drum set. You can do so in the inspector, which is found on the right side. Go to track, sounds, click on the drums icon, and settings. You can adjust the sound of each element of your drum set individually. You can adjust the velocity, the pan. Doing so is really important. It's going to make your project so much more enjoyable. Just a few tweaks here and there are really going to level up the sound of your project. Last but not least, and probably my favorite tip, get familiar with the command panel. You can do a lot of things in there. First of all, if you're looking for something within GP8, open the command panel and start typing. The command panel is going to show you exactly where to find whatever you're looking for. Now, there's a lot of more actions and commands that you can do within this tool. If you want a list of all the commands available, simply type a question mark within the command panel. It's going to list all the available commands. Typing an at sign is going to list all the different actions available. Getting to know this command panel is really going to help you make the most of Guitar Pro 8. It's going to speed up your workflow, 
highly recommend you spend a little bit of time with that. If you are not yet using Guitar Pro 8, you should. Check out the software at guitarpro.com. Thanks for watching. This is David Wallman. I'll see you next time.